Untrue Podcast. Alongside me, as always, on my screen right there, John Werner. Uh, good to see you this morning, Johnny. Thank you, Bryce. Always good to be here. Yep. And uh, joining us, our special guest this week is Drew Davison of the uh, Fort Worth Star Telegram. Uh, been at the Star Telegram for 13 years now. Uh, third year on the TCU beat, and Drew, thanks for coming on and uh, talking a little football with us. Yeah, good to be on with you, Bryce and John. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Uh, so, guys, you know, this week is the renewal of that old uh, Baylor-TCU rivalry, um, and it feels to me a little bit like the Frogs and the Bears are kind of floating down the Brazos on the same boat. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, they're both coming off disappointing losses to uh equally disappointing teams <laughs> you know uh <laughs> tcu lost uh, 33 to 14 at yeah. home to oklahoma we know kind of what the sooners have uh, endured this year and then uh baylor went down to talk tech uh went down to texas and limped home with a 27 to 16 loss so neither team's offense has really lit it up yet uh, they call this matchup the revivalry. Uh, which offense needs more, uh, is in more need of reviving? Uh, Drew, we'll start with you. Well, I, I think certainly from TCU's perspective, I, I, I think you could make a strong case they are. I mean, they've scored uh, 14 points the last two games, so certainly they haven't found the end zone uh, as often as they would like. And, and it starts up front, you know, they've, they had a lot of turnover along the offensive line. They lost their top three tackles, their best interior linemen. Uh, so the, they're kind of – the position coach is at Florida State now, so they are kind of going through uh, may, maybe some expected growing pains up front, but they have to uh, find a way to get better protection and, and get better running lanes for their running backs to establish. So I definitely think, you know, when you look at TCU's offense – um, you know, that there's plenty of uh, left to be desired for, so to speak. So I, I would certainly say um, them, although, like you said, both, both teams have kind of <laughs> endured some offensive struggles here. Yeah, no doubt. Johnny, the Bears haven't been much better. Yeah, I, I would challenge Drew on that point. Uh, <laughs> Baylor's <laughs> offense has been pretty bad, too. And uh, they can't ha use the excuse that uh, they don't have veteran offensive linemen because they do. But the big issue there has been Corona. They've had a different offensive line every game. They missed three guys the first game. They missed uh, two guys this last game, all of them starters. So uh, that's been a big problem. Um, I don't think they've tried to run the ball uh, enough. They haven't really tried to establish a, a ground game in the last two games. And uh, you know, the pass protection was pretty good against Texas. Charlie Brewer only got sacked once. But uh, he uh, his throws just didn't look very good. And uh, they tried very few deep shots. Uh, Coach Aranda said they had some set up, but Charlie would either get hit or the, the protection would break down or something. But, uh, yeah, they've, they've got a long way to go offensively. Yeah, so uh, this feels to me like uh, it's the stinkiness you know rather than the stinkiness uh, you don't know. <laughs> but, you know, in terms of y'all's answers, I'm going to call it a draw, uh, kind of a, a sister kisser, uh, a very ugly sister kisser. Um, so, yeah, you know, I, I've seen TCU a little bit on television and, and agree with Drew. They, you know, they certainly don't seem to have a lot of firepower um, I did see a note, uh, Drew, you know, in the uh, Big 12 release this week that um, their mm -hmm. red zone offense is pretty decent. Like, uh, if they get it down there, they tend to score. Um, so, that I mean, that's that's one thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they have been good, like you said, when they get it down there. They've got to get it down there more often, though. And, and you know, they're uh, – they obviously need more touchdowns and field goals, you know, yeah. coming away from when, when they're down there. So, um, you, you know, so they do have, you know, some signs of hope, I guess, so to speak, uh, you know, down there and, and they've been able to punch it in, but they still, uh, it's just the number of times. I mean, last week they had four, three and out offensive drives against Oklahoma. And then 
uh, two weeks prior to that against Kansas State, they had five three and out. So uh, it's just about finding that rhythm and, and sustained offensive drives, consistency where they're getting into the red zone uh, where they're able to capitalize. Yeah, and from Baylor's perspective, I'm writing a story uh, this week about uh, just kind of the lack of big plays that they've had. Um, they're like 72nd in the country in, in long scrimmage plays. Um, they haven't had – won over 40 yards this year which is just sort of mind-boggling john we were a little spoiled in the art Briles era i mean they would flip the field in a hurry yeah yeah uh against texas their longest play was 21 yards to yeah tight end yeah that's it's bizarre it's bizarre <laughs> and and it does feel like maybe uh charlie brewer's having some arm issues i don't know he's short-armed some some passes um, may, maybe the offensive line problems are getting in his head. I don't know what it is, but uh, we'll see what happens on Saturday. Uh, um, and if, you know, one of these offenses can bust out. So Drew, um, you know, just in time for you to get on the beat, uh, TCU's kind of gone right. on this little downward <laughs> spot. <spiral. laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, it's were... my fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't let Gary Patterson know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so since 2017, uh, I mean, TCU was 11 and three that year, and they've kind of been on this backslide ever since. I mean, they were seven and six, obviously made a bowl in, in 2018. Uh, five and seven last year was only the third time, pretty impressive stat, that they uh, missed a bowl game in Gary Patterson's mm -hmm. tenure. Um, you know, what do you kind of trace this trajectory to for TCU? Well, I, I think it goes without saying quarterback's a pretty important position in football and, and TCU's kind of been searching for for a quarterback, you know, here, here the and obviously Max Duggan's kind of the guy now, but you know, during the, the back stretch and, and Duggan's still a young quarterback, only a sophomore. Um, so you know, they've just you know, kind of 2018, for instance. Uh, they had a number of injuries um, and, and used four different quarterbacks, and and they won the Cheez It Bowl with their fourth string quarterback. So, mm -hmm. uh, so that actually ended up being. I know the record isn't pretty, but you know it actually ended up being a pretty impressive season given how many injuries they battled. And then last year, uh, again, not trying to make excuses for them, but you know they they were one in six in one score game, so they weren't too far off from having a pretty good year with a true freshman quarterback. And mm. obviously this year they're off to a slow start. And uh, so, you, you know, but I, I just think you, you look at quarterback play and some inconsistencies there and, and uh, you know, they, they had one year that 2018 year with a number of injuries, um, but they, they certainly have had some talent, you know, that, that hasn't been a question. I mean, they had two first round picks last year uh, in Jalen Rager and Jeff Gladney. Um, so they've got, you know, talent. It's not like, you know, they haven't been recruiting or bringing in some pretty good players. It's just, uh, you know, last year was kind of the one in six in one score games in 2018, uh, you know, was, was an injury plague season for them. Yeah. You know, and I, I like Max Duggan, uh, obviously played really well in the Texas game, uh, which, you know, turned out well right. for the frogs, <laughs> uh, you know, and I think, you know, you're going to get some inconsistencies with a, with a young quarterback. Um, what's sort of baffling is when you get a little inconsistencies with a veteran quarterback, which is what Baylor's <laughs> doing with right now. Uh, but, right. You know, again, I, I think Baylor uh, dealing with a lot in terms of its offensive line issues. Um, so guys, for a long time, Gary Patterson was kind of the, defensive coach in the big 12 i mean he was the guy you know and this league has been known for just wacky point a minute you know barn burner type games uh, a lot of passing over the years now you've got matt campbell at iowa state you've got chris Kleiman at kansas state you got dave aranda at baylor obviously known for uh known for defense uh, so do you guys think uh, this conference is is taking on a little bit more of a, a defensive mindset. John, I'll I'll start with you. Yeah, I, I definitely think so. You look at the scores across the league. There, I mean, you're not seeing too many uh, like 55 to 48 games anymore. 
I mean, you saw one, Texas OU, but it took, a, see, it's 53 to 45, but it took four overtimes right. to get that many points. But uh, yeah, the, the scoring's down, and I think a lot of it is uh, these guys coming in with a defensive mindset. And maybe uh, uh, defensive coaches are, are starting to catch up a little to these spread offenses. Uh, I don't know if they will ever completely catch up with them, but I, I think it's kind of trending more that way. Drew, what do you think? Uh, you, you know, I, I would agree to a certain extent that, hey, you know, the defense has gone better. Like John said, the scores uh, are a little bit more normal. They're not video game-ish. But at, at the end of the day, you just look at what Oklahoma has done, you know, before uh, this season, obviously, and just winning the conference. I mean, obviously, it, Oklahoma State, you know, right there at the top so far this season, obviously got a powerful offense. So, um, at the end of the day, I do think there's better defense, but uh, when you're talking about the top tier teams, the, the guys in contention, I think the, the best offenses are still trending and, and tend to be the ones competing for the championships. Although, obviously, K State's uh, <laughs> looks like they'll be squarely in the mix this year. Yeah. Uh, you know, Big 12 teams recruit Texas, right? And Texas is a very quarterback rich state. Drew mentioned it earlier, the importance of the quarterback position. I mean, you can't, you can't really overstate that. Um, and so I think as long as there are good quarterbacks in the Big 12, we're going to have, you know, pretty good offense. Um, but I do think maybe this is, uh, as you guys said, I think it may be a little bit of a signal that, that more teams are taking defense uh, a little more seriously and, and, um, and I think we've seen, you know, when the conference has gotten into the college football playoff, which it's really only been Oklahoma, but every time they get there, they kind of fall on their face a little bit. They give up a lot of points. Um, and, you know, I think if these teams want to compete on a national level for, for big prizes, uh, you know, they're going to need to be able to stop somebody every now and then. So uh, I think it's a good trend. Um, so as far as the top of the Big 12 standings go, Oklahoma State actually stayed undefeated last week, um, slipped by Iowa State in Stillwater. Now the Cowboys get a Texas team that we've all seen play. Uh, and, you know, obviously it's been up, it's been down. I mean, uh, so my question to you guys is this, are we going to see the good Longhorns this week or the bad Longhorns? And, and you know, do you think they have enough to take down the Cowboys? Well, I think your guess is as good as anyone's. <laughs> uh, but, you, you know, I, I do think Texas, uh, I think they're, they're, they're going to show up this week, right? Just, uh, and it's hard not to, I guess, when you're playing, you know, the top team in the conference right now as far as ranking and whatnot. But uh, I do think Texas has shown, you know, that they can compete, they can score. Uh, Certainly, they got talent, and I just think Sam Ellinger's, uh, you, you know, a guy who's gonna, um, you know, keep them in games like this. So I do think uh, the good Texas shows up, but uh, again, I could look like a fool here in in, in a few days uh, come Sunday. <laughs> John, I, I'm gonna say uh, I'm not sure if the good Texas will show up, but uh, I think it's gonna be a really competitive game. Um, I, I like Oklahoma State, though. I think they have a, a really good veteran defense. They know how to play well together. Uh, a great running game. Um, I think they're, they're going to win the league. I, I know they haven't played the, the top teams. They're all the top teams yet. But I, I really like their chances. And uh, I think this is the year uh, the, the mullet wins it. Yeah, the mullet. <laughs> we'll yeah. see. He's still got to get past Oklahoma, and that's been kind of a bugaboo. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've said I think that a fall is coming for Oklahoma State. I don't know which week it is. I, I actually picked Iowa State last week, so uh, it didn't, you know, that didn't work out for me. But um, I'm going to take the Cowboys with a little bit of trepidation uh, mm -hmm. just because they're playing at home. And then I think they, if I'm right, I may be wrong, I think they turn around and play K-State maybe the next week. And, and to me, that right now looks mm -hmm. like a, a pretty good game. So, 
Um, so we always, Drew, we always like to close with a little fun question or fun game at the end of our podcast. And so uh, this one I thought uh, is kind of interesting because, you know, we know the history of the TCU Baylor rivalry. They obviously were uh, together in the Southwest Conference for a long time, but they were actually together in Waco at one time. You know, this was way before even John Werner started covering stuff. <laughs> uh, so let's, even Dave Campbell. Yeah, yeah. even before Dave <laughs> Campbell. That That's well played, right. John. Uh, so let's play a little game of what if. So what if TCU's administration building had never burned down in 1910, and that's why they ended up bolting Waco and moving to Fort Worth. Um, and so let's say TCU stays in Fort Worth and Baylor, or TCU stays in Waco and Baylor eventually moves to Fort Worth. How would that have changed these programs over the years? And uh, if at all, I mean, Oh, I, I think it would have, you know, had potential to be huge change, right? Like uh, if TCU's in Waco, do are they in a Power Five conference, mm, right? Like right. Uh, uh, they're so know, they, small, they struggled. Yeah, they're yeah. they're a smaller school. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, they kind of bounced around conferences before getting into the Big Twelve, and, and Gary Patterson winning the Rose Bowl and and putting them on the map, I think, really helped them get that Power Five, but. You know, who knows what becomes of TCU uh, if they stay in Waco. But, it, and as far as Baylor, you know, obviously they've had a pretty strong, uh, I guess every program has ups and downs, but Baylor's been in contention and obviously had Matt Rule, a great coach, take them to the title game uh, last year. But, you know, do, are they able to maybe recruit easier and, and get better players? Who knows? I mean, if, if they are – in Fort Worth because TCU likes to sell that, Hey, we're in a big city and you know, it's a major Metroplex. And obviously uh, I guess to each their own on that, but I I would be interested to see, you know, does Baylor have similar players or do they, you know, (laughs) or or does it help expand their reach if they can uh, kind of be in a major Metroplex? Johnny. Oh, I don't think it matters which school is in which town. I think they they will have always hated each other. <laughs> I think that ain't yes. that ain't I think it's just kind of meant to be. Uh, you know, I think they should both start wrestling programs to maybe get out a little more of the aggression. <laughs> you know, I mean, they have like ninety man wrestling teams. Yeah, yeah, right. I like it. I like <laughs> it. They need some more measures for this. I don't think football. Right. You know, for these guys, it is enough of an outlet. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. so as I was thinking about this after I came up with the question, I was like, this is this is hard for me to wrap my brain around because uh, as a good Baptist boy, uh, I mean, I, I sort of look at Waco as Baptistville, you know, I mean, uh, they need, I mean, Baylor and Waco, it just makes sense. There's a Baptist church on, you know, every corner of the street, you know, I mean, uh and so it just would seem weird for Baylor not to be here. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I agree uh, with Drew that I think uh, if you're in a big metro area like that, you use that in recruiting. I mean, that you can't help but use it. You're like, hey, come to the big city, you know. And I think that is appealing to certain uh, recruits. And then, you know, I think Baylor will always try to use – hey, you know, we've got this uh, Christian environment. Not that TCU doesn't have that, uh, but, you know, they definitely push that in recruiting, John. We've seen that over the years. So, yeah, Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's kind of fun to think about, um, (laughs) but, you know, we are where we are. uh, (laughs) You know, it's all good, uh, you know, and we like Waco and, you know, all that, so... (laughs) Uh, well, Drew, uh, I assume you'll be coming down to Waco on Saturday. Uh, yes, that's the plan. So yeah. we'll be driving Good. down Saturday morning. It's an easy drive right down 35. So, you know, hey, as Drew. a guy who's covering TCU, I, I appreciate Baylor and TCU just being 90 minutes apart. You know, Absolutely. it makes our job easier. Yeah, no doubt. Drew, as both, both you and I know it's not easy to get a press box seat anymore. So, no, uh, it's not. I, I was very fortunate. 
Yes, yeah. yes. I was very fortunate. Uh, I emailed Taylor. I said, hey, is this new media? Uh, welcome, whatnot. And, you know, somehow I got in. I don't know how, but uh, <laughs> fortunately, ba Baylor's let me in the door. Yeah, cool. Well, we'll, uh, we'll see you down here, give you a little air uh, <laughs> fist bump or whatever we're supposed yeah. to do. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, thanks for coming on with us, man. All right. Thanks, Bryce and John. Yep. Appreciate it.